to our first anniversary of this 513 service. We started on March 29th of last year, and so essentially the 21st will be our, our first anniversary of doing this service. Some of you have been with us for the whole year, and some of you have just joined us, and some of you on YouTube have been watching us for the whole year, and some have just found us today. But, but today, we're looking at that and we're anticipating that, which is part of what we do during this time of Lent. It's a season of anticipation, and it's a season of preparation. We talked the last couple weeks. First, we talked two weeks ago in anticipation of the beginning of Lent, of preparing to do hard things, to go on this retreat that we are on right now, on this time of of reflection, of study, of prayer, of new dedications, taking new things on, giving things up, in order to dedicate our lives closer and closer to God. To not simply come and get our fill once a week, but to be in His Word and to be in service each and every day. Last week, the first week we talked about preparing to do hard things. This week, we're going to talk about a different type of preparation. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 5. What are we pre prepared to do in this season of Lent. Every high priest is selected from among men is appointed to represent them in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He's able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as for the sins of the people. We started in this a lesson about what the high priest's job was. What is it that, that he was supposed to do? And there's a simple fact that in the first century, there were probably people who did not know what the high priest's job was. And also some people who would have thought that the high priest, of course, was a perfect man, otherwise he wouldn't have that job. Just like pastors today expecting to be perfect people <laughs> rather than normal humans. As a matter of fact, this is, it's very important for the high priest to be a normal person because he is able to intercede and he's able to sympathize. He's able to intercede and he's able to sympathize. He gives the gifts and sacrifices and during the time of atonement there's the two groups that, that he takes and the, and the one is he puts on his own sins and the sins of all the people onto that onto that goat and that's called the scapegoat that takes all the sins, and that goat is put out into the desert. The other goat is the one that is offered, offered as a sacrifice to God on the altar. But then after that as well, the priest for himself and his family offers up a bull to God for the sins that are upon him. And another sacrifice, because he's a priest, but he's still human. He still, he still makes mistakes. And because of that, he's able to sympathize with the people as well. No one takes this honor upon himself. He must be called by God, just as Aaron was. He must be called by God, just as Aaron was. In the Episcopal Church, we, we call this discernment and ordination, ordained by God to be a priest. My service last year, on February 17th, I was ordained to servant ministry in the diaconate. And in August I was ordained as a priest, as a presbyter, to serve in this, this role as, as a priest in God's church. Ordained by God. The discernment is from people. Aaron was called by God to be that mouthpiece for Moses and also to offer sacrifices. So, 
Christ also did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest. He was a carpenter's son. He was a carpenter who worked. And he was a rabbi after that. But he did not take upon himself that duty as high priest. He was told, you are my son, today I have become your father, and you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Now, Jesus had a much tougher road to becoming a high priest than I did to becoming a priest. He had to die. Much tougher road than me. But of course, he's God. I'm just a human. He is God. He is perfect. He was... He was, called, he was called to be a priest through his suffering. It's about who he is, and then how it is done is not, if you look at the multiple choice question, not, not like it was for me, where it's discernment, not through the ironic priesthood, where everybody would have expected he's not from the right tribe. He's in the right tribe to be a king, but he's not in the right tribe to be a priest. How is he a priest? Chapter 7 explains this more if you want to look at it in detail. But simply it is, it is through the order of Melchizedek, the one who offered sacrifice with Abraham. It's through that high priest, through that priest, that Jesus was able to be made a high priest, made by God. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death and was heard because of his reverent submission. Just look at John chapter 17. Garden of Gethsemane. The, the paintings are of, of the light coming down on him, making it seem like a serene scene. But when you read it, he sweat blood. It was passionate prayer. It was Jesus communicating to God and saying, if it's your will, take this cup from me. But if not, I will go. And that wasn't the only time. We don't know the details of all his retreats that he took, just as we are in our retreat of our 40 days now. Jesus' preparation was in those private times that he often got pulled away from. When those private times where he went up on the mountains to pray, when he went into the hills to pray, when he tried to be alone, he was in passionate conversation with God. 